I used to work at Catholic Answers. Yeah. By the way, you said earlier that sometimes they'll bring something up. Is this something you'd be interested in? And you can say no. Yeah. Yeah. Well, back in the day when I worked for them, back in 2012, yeah. they asked me if I'd be interested in giving assembly addresses on bullying. <laughs> and I said, no, I don't, I don't think so. Pro uh, or anti? <laughs> right. Well, yeah, anti. But... I don't know. Now I think I'm okay with a bit of bullying, you know? Like now I feel like we've swung so far in the opposite direction. You know, we joke, but uh, mm -hmm. Greg Lukanoff, is that his name? The guy who co-wrote uh, The Coddling of the American Mind with Jonathan Haidt, he argues that one of the reasons you get kind of the woke generation is because the anti-bullying movement taught them that words were violence. And they responded to that so incredibly that they thought real violence was fine in response to mean words. And it's a provocative thesis, yeah. but he has some research that kind of points in that direction. Certainly there's a correlation in terms of time that, yeah, people become very thin skinned when the message is sticks and stones can break your bones, but words are way worse and ideas are dangerous and hide from them. It's like, yeah. no, 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 that is a disastrous. Yeah, so I want to be, yeah, be kind of clear here too, lest people think I'm saying something like burn all the Mormon books again. <laughs> um, for example, I don't, no one should ever bully another right. person and yet i think people should be ashamed of the shameful things they do yeah and in eliminating bullying uh look at this 10 year old boy petitions apple to change its nerd emoji a 10 year old boy has taken it upon himself to petition apple to change one of its emojis teddy from oxford oxfordshire england would like to na rename the emoji that wears black frame glasses and has two buck teeth sticking out, which currently the company calls the nerd emoji. They're making people think we're nerds and it's absolutely horrible. The boy and glasses wearer <laughs> and buck teeth, no, said in an interview with the BBC, it's making me feel sad and upset. And I, yeah, right. So the, again, the point is that we shouldn't be mocking other people. We should be charitable towards each other. And yet there should be a way to sort of let people know. Like I was in a steak restaurant the other day mm -hmm. with my friend, Father Jason, and a kid came in with pajama pants on and mm. I thought he should feel ashamed. Yeah. And okay, so maybe by shame, I mean something other than a hatred of self. That's not what I mean. Right. But, well, this, but is a, should... this is a good distinction, right? Because a lot of the redefinition of shame is a, a hatred of self. And that's not what yeah, Aquinas means by that's shame. That's not what I mean. I mean, he should have more respect for himself. Yeah. So as not to act in a way that's beneath his dignity. Yeah, very well said. And it felt like that back in the day when we could s <laughs> yell things at each other, <laughs> uh, you know, there was a way to sort of show the group this behavior is unacceptable. Right. And sometimes that was wrong. Like you were wrong right. to think that's unacceptable, right. but sometimes no, you were right. Like to tattoo your face and dye your hair purple and wear ripped jeans that are barely holding on, something like that. Like having someone in your community say, you look stupid, might be extremely helpful for that person. But if we're no longer allowed to express those opinions, then. Yeah. So, I mean, the two ways a society kind of goes when, when that's the case is either one, there's just no longer any standards whatsoever because having standards is offensive. Or two, and I think more realistically, those standards still exist and they still play a role, mm -hmm. but you don't say them out loud. And so the person that you just gave the example of the face tattoos and the purple hair and the ripped jeans can't get a job and thinks, why is everyone persecuting me? And no one's just like, well, you don't look professional. You don't look, you know, and, and this is mm. an injustice to that person. Because look, there's this important mention just in terms of developmental psychology, right? When you're a child, you look to your parents for approval and you need to get two messages. On the one hand, on the, you need to hear you are unconditionally and profoundly loved. On the other hand, you also need, this is good behavior, this is bad behavior. Do this, don't do that. And so often parents go into one of those two extremes and they don't do a good job of hitting the other. Well, that's good. And after you get to really about the teenage years, you start looking to your peers for the same thing. And there's good developmental reason for this because it's not enough for you to survive that you are pleasing to mommy and daddy. You also have to be someone who is well looked upon in society. And so you look to peers and especially older peers and see, okay, is this cool? Is this uncool? Look, I wore like Jinko jeans. I don't know if you maybe you were spared this in Australia, horrible baggy pants I, okay. for a short period of time. Yeah. 
I wish I somebody told wear, me I, I looked to ridiculous. The, limp, the kind of limp biscuit Fred Durst belt, <laughs> yeah. you know, where it where hang, hung down. And <laughs> yeah, this 90s is fashion. This is American culture just poisoning the world. And You're me, welcome, little world. boy, <laughs> poor Perry, <laughs> South Australia, picking up on it. Thanks for that. Yeah, yeah exactly. We've, we we've, also had dishwashers and automobiles and airplanes, so thank you for that too. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Those were from an earlier era. By the time we got to the 90s, we were like, we've run out of good ideas. Here's the bad ones. <laughs> So, yeah, but in, in all seriousness, like there is a role to say this works, this doesn't work. And when we don't have that because we're afraid it's going to hurt people's feelings, that's a disservice to people. Now, you've got to have a way of doing that. You know, there's such a thing as constructive criticism and such a thing as destructive criticism. So I actually agree that bullying, in as much as it's not looking to help the person, is not good, but good can still come from it. Yes, I think that's what I'm saying. And the problem is when that can't happen in the schoolyard, it's definitely happening on the internet. And oh, yeah. usually it's a lot more vicious yeah. and it's anonymous. So you think of these three different categories. One is two friends sitting across from each other. You know, like if I said, and you heard me say before you came on the show, Mormon should burn all books. Because of our friendship, you realized, you probably thought, I don't want to tell you what you thought, but you probably thought, okay, like I think I know what he's saying. I'm not right. going to like skewer him publicly on this. Right. Like, in, a, in, a, in a conversation like this, we give each other the benefit of the doubt. Yeah. We seek to endear ourselves to the other. We seek to say, well, what do you mean by that? You know, we don't. All right, so there's that. And then you have acquaintances, maybe, say the schoolyard, mm -hmm. where you know the person and the person is calling you out on something, charitably or uncharitably. Yeah. But, but when that can't even happen, then you've got the YouTube comment section where burner accounts are saying all sorts of horrible things. Yeah. And they certainly don't have your good in mind and they, they're just trying to be provocative. Right. It's, it's the kind of rush to have a hot take on the issue. And so there's a huge pile on effect where everyone wants to be on the right side because look, everyone is still performing for their peers, even online. Yeah. And so a lot of what's going on is they want to seem like they have the right opinions and the right ideas. And that often takes a form of scapegoating someone and demonizing, you know, the person who stepped out of line. And so, oh, oh I'm blanking on his name. The, uh, the guy who's done a, a whole book or yeah he wrote a book on this and he's done a lot of other stuff he's the guy who wrote i think he did the men who stare at goats but he anyway he has a whole book on so you've been shamed and what he looks at is he just goes and interviews the people who've become like the internet's person they hate for five minutes and just see how it's destroyed their life while everybody else kind of moved on when yeah. and in most of the cases the person's actually done something wrong it's not that they were just misunderstood. They were they you caught them on a bad day. They were making an inappropriate joke. They were doing something <laughs> offensive. They were being stupid or cruel or yeah. whatever. But who hasn't had yeah. days like that? Yeah. And in that any relational context, a billion people just say, We hate you. Yeah. And then it's like, well, now you've lost your job and good luck finding another one. And it's just awful. Uh so, yeah, we haven't resolved bullying. We've just exported it to the internet. Yeah. And it's it's way worse there than having someone say, eh, don't do that. That's that's gross. That's offensive. That's too far. Yeah. We're ironically having someone in their life to say, pump the brakes. Don't post that online. Don't even do that. <laughs> Would have been tremendously helpful for them. Yeah. Yeah, well, I want to tell right. you about Hallow, which is the number one downloaded prayer app in the world. It's outstanding. Hallow.com slash Matt Frad. Sign up over there right now and you will get the first three months for free. That's like a lot of time. You can decide whether it's useful to you or not, whether it's helpful. If you don't like it, you can always quit. Hallow.com slash Matt Frad. I use it. My family uses it. It's fantastic. There are over 10,000 audio guided prayers, meditations, and music, including my lo-fi. Hallow has been downloaded over 15 million times in 150 different countries. It helps you pray, helps you meditate, helps you sleep better. It helps you build a daily routine and a habit of prayer. There's honestly so much excellent stuff on this app that it's difficult to get through it all. Just go check it out. Hallow dot com slash Matt Frad. The link is in the description below. It even has an entire section for kids. So if you're a parent, uh, you could play little Bible stories to them at night. It'll help them pray. Fantastic. Hello dot com slash Matt Frad.